All right, so getting into our topic for today, this is, um, we're starting topic two. We have these characters that you drew, uh, these model sheets that you turned in. We're then going to um, start to talk about animation. First, what we'll do is we'll do a walk cycle animation. We're not going to start with your character yet. We're going to start with a very simple stick figure character, basically, because I want to get us acclimated with various animation concepts in the software. Um, so let's, if you're not there yet, go ahead and uh, open up Animate. And then we'll select Create New HTML5 <laughs> Canvas. So Create New HTML5 Canvas file. And then we're going to change the size of the project to the size of what we had for this Topic 1 homework. Uh, on the right side, you should see then the properties of the project. And we'll change that over to HD quality, which is what? What did we have to do this for the Topic 1? 1920 for this, and then 18, uh, 1080. Exactly. 1920 by 1080. So that's our HD size. That's how you get good quality prints. Some of you got a little, uh, you know, uh, dinged one or two points in the homework because you didn't change your project size. And what happened was when you printed it, it was blurry. We had a low quality image to work with, and therefore, when we printed it, it mm -hmm. printed low mm -hmm. quality. Uh, for us, we want to use the high quality HD size. And then we will save this. Let's save our project. File save as. Uh, I'm going to save that to the desktop, and we will call this walk practice. This project is 1920 by 1080. We're keeping the frame rate, the frames per second, at 24. This is going to move at a, at a classic 24 frames per second of good animation. What this means is that every second, FPS means every second uh, of animation, there's 24 frames per second. So a second is a short amount of time, but that means there are 24 drawings or 24 frames that happen in one second. The best and smoothest animation takes that advantage of that, that there's one different drawing every 24 seconds. If you see my hand right here, it's pointed up to the sky, and if I move it over here, well, that looks like two frames, this frame here and this frame here. But actually, there were frames in between each movement all the way across like this. So if I wanted to draw a nice, um, smooth animation, I'd have to draw, if this were my, my drawn hand, I'd have to draw my hand at every half little movement all the way across till it gets straight. So 24 frames per second means 24 drawings every <coughs> second. And when we started our very, very first uh, day, I think, and we animated some faces. Remember, we did some quick face animations, like six different faces. That was like the flip book. We drew one face, we got another page, we drew another face, got another page, we drew another face. That's what animate is all about. We have these frames, and we're going to animate. We're going to make this pretty simple. Layer 1, frame 1 with the brush tool. We're going to draw a very simple character. We're not going to get that complex. We're going to draw a character something like this. Don't worry about any hands yet. We're just going to focus on uh, you know, some big headed character and feet. Try to draw it in this kind of pose for the moment. We're going to draw a character, very simple. You can get complex, but it'll be much harder. Let's just get very simple like this, because what we're going to do is we're going to animate a little walk cycle. Now, looking at me for a moment, I will exaggerate in that right now we've got the character drawn something like this, right? One foot forward, one foot back. If I'm going to walk, 
eventually I'm going to be in this position. See how I'm on one foot, my right foot, my other foot's up. Then my foot goes to the other way. It's like the opposite. My left foot is forward, my right foot is back. Eventually I'm going to be on my left foot, and the right foot is up, and then the right foot is down. That's a walk cycle. A very exaggerated ministry of funny walks, right? And so that is what we're going to do something like this. I've got the, the very exaggerated spread foot like that. <clears throat> what we do on the bottom here, we've got one frame. We need a new frame. If you right click frame two, insert blank keyframe. So down on the bottom here, we're working with our timeline. If you changed your your timeline to the top and such, obviously you know where your timeline is, but you're going to right click frame two, insert blank keyframe, a new sheet of paper. I want to see my first frame. So I need to turn on at the bottom here, onion skinning. We saw this a while ago. But onion skinning lets you preview your previous or future frames. I'm on frame two, I did right click, insert blank keyframe, and then I'm gonna activate onion skimming so I can see the frame beforehand. There's my original drawing. So now that I can see that on frame two, I'm gonna draw the next step, and we're gonna draw a very simple, choppy uh, walk cycle first, and then we'll refine it, as I said. Uh, we're here first. Uh, right foot forward, left foot back. Next, my right foot uh, is vertical here. My left foot is, is, is up. That's our next frame, something like that. So, I'm just going to draw the head again, straight down, one leg, the other leg a little bent. If you're drawing hands and all of that, great. I'm not going to talk about hands yet. So, one foot straight down, the other one bent. So, right foot was forward, then right foot is vertical, and the left foot. We need a new frame three, and then I'm going to draw that foot has come down. So, right click frame three, insert blank keyframe. The onion skinning here is showing me my current frame and two frames back. That's too much. I only want to see one frame behind me. So those markers there show that. I'm on my current frame three, and it's showing two and one. I only want to show two and three. So drag that blue end one to the right so that it's only two frames. I'm going to pull that over here. I only want to see one frame back. That's the point of that. You can keep as many frames as you want, but for me, for you, it might be easier just two frames. So now that foot needs to come forward, and the other needs to go back. So I'm going to draw. Oops. I'm going to draw the head again. It doesn't have to be exact, that's fine. The body, forward foot, back foot. Save that, and then we'll go to control, test. We have three frames. We have three points where we've drawn. <laughs> Test it. Let that open up. There's the animation. It's very fast. It's very choppy. It doesn't look that good. That's OK. We're barely starting. The problems that are happening here is that it's happening really fast. We are at 24 frames per second. And I said, that means there should be 24 drawings 
per one second. We only have three drawings. <coughs> we only have three drawings in twenty in twenty four frames. So to slow this down, we can either change the frame rate, but we shouldn't. I'll explain why later. Or we can add more frames. So if we're going to leave the frame rate alone, that means we need to add or remove more frames. Now, for me, it's going to annoy me that this keeps popping up, this output panel here. The way that I uh, stop that is that I like to click and drag it to detach it and then just drag it to the corner somewhere where I don't have to look at it. We'll just drag that out the panel out of the way because we've got um, we've got the, uh, the the timeline to worry about. Well, these three frames, it's way too few frames. It goes by so fast. So we can uh, these were all blank keyframes. We started with a brand new blank sheet of paper and drew the different foot. In animation, really only the highest quality, most expensive animation by the best studios are animated at 24 frames per second, meaning that there are 24 whole drawings every second. It's much more common to animate uh, by doubling or sometimes tripling the same frame. So what we want to do is let's go back to frame one and right click it and select insert frame so just insert frame what that does is now it's going to show frame 1 for two frames it starts with your drawing and it shows it one more frame I'm going to do the same thing here and here so you're going to right click insert frame and then you're gonna right click and insert frame each black dot is a keyframe where there is an original drawing each white square is just continuing the same frame I'm showing that frame I'm showing that position more than once so I've still got three keyframes but in total now, my animation is six frames. One through six. Three keyframes, but six frames in total. If I test that, I'm going to save it first. And you might want to memorize as soon as possible the keyboard shortcut Control Enter. I want to test that again. It doesn't look so hyper now. He's starting, he or she is starting to walk a little bit slower. So I'm he's showing you. Backwards. What's that? Yeah, it looks like he's walking backwards. But he's moonwalking, clearly. Moon back. Moon back. This is the thing. We, we don't have enough drawings here to convey that. Maybe now that you say it, okay, yeah, he's walking backwards. I, it didn't look backwards to me a moment ago, but now I'm thinking he's walking backwards. But we don't have enough. We don't have enough information. We don't have enough drawings. That's fine. We're still getting there. What I'm showing here is that the um, when we had just one frame at a time, one drawing at a time, it looked way too fast. As we then add some more frames, it slows down. And as we add more detail, it will look more realistic. Let's uh, go back here. Let's uh, change layer one name to walk one. Let's make a new layer called walk two. Let's turn layer one, walk one, into a guide. And let's hide it. So right click walk one and select guide. And then click on the I column to hide it. We need a new walk two. So we did a three cycle walk, which looked pretty bad. It was, it was too fast and it looked kind of weird. So I was showing you when I was standing here, the exaggeration obviously that my, my feet are like this. But if I'm walking normally, 
you know, I'm going to be doing something like this, and if I exaggerate a little bit more, notice that there are these steps in between. So my feet are going down a little bit like this. See that? There's a little bit of bend to my knee at a certain point, and at other points the knees are straight. So we should add some more frames to account for that. We'll start again with the with the straight out legs. I'm gonna draw that legs straight like that. I'm going to go to frame three. I want to double my my keyframes. So we'll go to frame three. Insert blank keyframe. It's going to be annoying to keep doing the right click. There's keyboard shortcuts. Uh, on the keyboard, F7 on your keys will give you a blank keyframe. Instead of doing right click, insert, blank keyframe, if your hand is by the keyboard, just press F7 and you get a new blank keyframe, the white circle. The white circle means I haven't drawn anything in that frame. Black circle means I have. The um, white square means the current frame continues. Did you notice that a moment ago? Let me take that back for a moment. When we drew on walk two the, a new animation, there's the black circle, and it went all the way over here to the white square. That one drawing was kept for six seconds. We saw it like this. This drawing was kept here for, not seconds, but frames. This one was kept for two frames. This one was kept for six frames. Show that drawing all the way from here to here. On frame three, F7 for a blank keyframe. And now we'll draw the next thing. You saw here, my legs bend a little bit, the knees. I'm like this, and then I'm going to bend my knees a little bit like that. So next we'll draw an animation with my knees bent a little like that, which then eventually takes me to this point. We have one more frame in between. We had this, and then we had this. But I want this, and then this, before this. So here, that requires that I also the character is a little lower. If, if your character is going to move believably, uh, again, try to see this. If I'm at this point, uh, try to see where the top of my head is compared to the background. And when I'm over here, I'm actually taller. I'm taller up according to my background. When I'm here, I'm a little shorter. And when I'm here, I'm even shorter. So that means when we're drawing this character, the head should be a little bit lower. <coughs> the body leg is bent like that, something like that. Straight leg, head a little lower, knees are bent. Next comes where I'm standing. Uh, vertically like that, this is at my tallest. When my leg, on my right leg here, this is where I'm at the tallest, and then my left leg is bent. Now, two frames later, on frame five, hit F7 for a blank keyframe. And then now, I'll draw the head a little taller up here, because you saw that I'm standing on one leg tall. That leg goes down. The other leg is bent. I'm going to go two frames later. Now we're over on uh, seven, blank keyframe. I'm going to start to go the opposite way. My, my leg is coming forward. Uh, so this is, again, the um, if my leg is over here, it's going to come uh, forward, it's going to hit. So next frame, uh, on frame 7, F7, to give yourself a new, uh, a new blank frame, 
Then I'm going to draw the legs coming out. Because I'm standing at this point here, the legs coming out. When it hits the floor, things will bend a little bit. So the bend of the knees is coming after I hit the ground. I'm coming over here. Uh, standing on one foot, the leg goes forward, hits the floor, next frame, bend the legs a little. So two frames later, frame nine, hit F7 to give yourself a blank keyframe. Draw the head, bent leg. Now let's see how that looks. I'll save it and run it, or that is save it and test it, control test. It's getting there. Uh, I need to be careful on mine. I'm making the head way too different on one of those frames. You know, it suddenly looks really big, body looks okay, the leg because there isn't any background to also kind of show you that there's movement. It kind of looks floating. It kind of looks, uh, if you keep staring at it, it's going to play tricks on you in your mind. That's because we're missing different things. We're mixing a background. The hands also convey movement. Um, he's, you know, perfectly standing up, basically, but a little bit more realistically, he might also be moving his body a little bit. So the point of this, this is why it's one of the most hardest animations to make, because there's actually a lot of detail we need to take into account. Not just where the legs are, where are the hands? What about the body? Is it vertical? Is it stiff? Is it leaned over a little bit? And in this case, with... Um, what did we get up to? We got up to nine frames. This is starting to look a little bit more, a little bit better with nine frames. The original three frames look pretty bad, as then we double them to um, six frames, a little better, and then as we went on to nine frames, a little bit more. So this is the point. More frames will give us more detail, more possibility to make it more accurate. Let's um, let's do this with uh, another another layer again. So we'll do a walk three. Your walk two, turn it into a guide and hide it. We'll go back to frame one. So let's say draw the head again, draw the body, draw those, those legs again. <coughs> what might be useful for us are guides to kind of see where the floor is and that sort of thing. So let's go up to the uh, view menu and select rulers. We get these rulers. Then from the top ruler, I'll click and drag down an imaginary line and put it somewhere where, where the feet are. So just from the top, from the top ruler drag down. This line won't show up if we print or we animate. But this is going to help us then also keep the um, keep the floor in a in a spot that we can uh, use as a reference. So the character is going to be something like that. I'm going to do it again, starting to bend the knees. So we'll go over to 
frame 3, F7 for a blank keyframe based on where that floor is. I'm also going to move the body a little bit instead of it being completely, uh, completely vertical. I'm moving the body. I'm kind of arching the back a little bit. Then I'll start to do the bent legs. So it goes down here and here, trying to hit the floor. So if this is my floor here. This leg is going to start to bend where it's going to hit that floor for um, for reference this foot might be starting to come up because as this leg bends that foot goes up that happens in the real world too as I'm starting to bend this forward foot right here the back of my foot is starting to come up some amount depending how far I make it go up it's more about the animation what kind of animation I bent the head a little bit I'll try to keep the head the same kind of size. That's the consistency. That's the point of the model sheet. If I drew in the model sheet uh, hands a certain size, they should be that size always. I had drawn the head too big at one point, too small at another point, and it shows up in the animation. Next frame. Uh, frame uh, five, F seven. I'm going to add a little bit more of the of this particular step. Uh, it's it's gonna go the legs gonna bend a little bit more his body's gonna bend a little bit more down as well so I'm gonna have the head curve a little bit more the body uh, the legs bend a little bit more Still within the part of the walk cycle, where he's barely, <coughs> going to, barely going to start to take another step. So more drawings, more much smoother animation, more lifelike. We saw with three drawings, it was very unlifelike. With more drawings, it will get a little more lifelike. Next, uh, next. Um, jump two frames later and then F7. This is the part where he's going to start to come up. So the the body's going to start to bend up again. This leg is starting to come up straight. This other leg is starting to move more. <coughs> the head is coming back. how far we move from one to the other. This is the whole process and complexity of animation. I'll give you a handout in a moment where it shows, well, uh, in a very realistic animation, I have to have my hand moving through this arc right here. I have to draw my hand moving completely. But in some of the more cartoonier animation, I can start right here and in between draw a distorted hand that looks stretched out for a middle frame. So there's going to be a normal hand, a stretched out hand, a normal hand. And that will give the illusion that my hand moved really fast. If in between I have a really stretched out hand like trails, so normal, stretched out, normal. And it'll look like my hand moved really fast in three frames. I'm saying that because right here, well, it moved from here to here. And that could be a relatively long amount of space. But it could give the effect that he's really bobbing his head as he's moving around. If it was just moving a little bit, then it'd be like he's walking a little bit more stiff. 
this exaggeration of how far do these limbs move and all these details that is the, the essence of animation. Two frames over, frame nine, F7. This will be the part where the, now the leg is completely straight up, and then also the, the body straight up here, leg straight there, this leg bent, head straight. I think I'm still drawing the heads too big and too small, but I can fix that later. So now it took me even more frames to get to that point. Here it was spread legs, straight legs, straight legs, spread legs. And right here it took all of these frames just to get to the same spread or straight leg. To three frames in between to get from the spread legs to the straight leg. More frames, more smooth. Two frames later, frame 11, F7. Now it's starting to be the other side. I'm starting to pivot away from this leg to the other, to the other side. So eventually my straight leg is going to bend a little bit and then that leg is starting to go forward a little bit because eventually it's going to hit over here again. But um, straight leg is going to start to bend a little bit. It's going to start to come forward the other leg <coughs> and then on. So not as high as before, straight, leg bending a little bit. The other leg starting to come forward some amount, still bent. Two frames later, F7. frame is very similar to the first frame. So the first frame and the last frame are very similar. Well, a walk cycle, if you do it the right way, that's the point, that these frames will be the same eventually, and then they, they, they repeat. So actually, this last frame here Let's give it a shot this way, depending how you drew it. This last frame, I'm going to do right click, uh, remove frame. The point is that uh, the, the legs are out here, and we drew the same legs that were out a moment ago, but the frame before that point had the bent legs. I'm going to turn off my onion skinning for a moment. And then as you swipe these frames over, you see how it's moving. You can also do a quick test of your animation here. Um, if you activate this, this loop feature and then spread the this uh, selection on all the way across. And this time, just press Enter instead of Control Enter. It will uh, loop inside of your inside of your timeline. So 
So you can test it inside of uh, Animate right here by activating this loop. You can do the Control Enter. So the legs started to move. Too, too far of a jump between the two legs. This up here, I think this movement is looking pretty good for the head. See over there, the legs still need some work. But you see this kind of back and forth a little bit. This movement, they still need some work. But this, uh, we, we do it all the time, of course, and it's so natural. And here, now that we try to animate it, perhaps now it's very difficult. So I've got this handout. Let's check out this, this handout that I've got for you to help us a little bit more. We try to kind of freestyle ourselves for a moment. Let's check out this handout that I have that could be helpful. Go over to the uh, web design folder. And then inside of CIS 126, and inside of topic 2, handouts, you want to drag a copy, walk two legs, copy that over to your desktop so you can get a copy of it, and then open it up. Walk two legs side dot gif. Here are various examples. You can zoom in with your with your scroll wheel. Here are various examples of walk cycles. This perhaps also is very helpful to see so many different aspects of this. This shows you also the, the leg and the foot that is far from us. One of the reasons ours doesn't look that good is because we don't get much differentiation between left leg and right leg. They're just lines. But here, they colored the left leg and left foot a different color to also help you with that. Here's the straight spread legs. Then there's the bend because then the foot is coming up again, the left one. There's one more that we didn't draw. No, we did draw that one, yeah. Bent, coming up further, and then there's the straight leg completely up. Now, they still put some uh, some curve there, not completely straight. Then the leg is starting to come over. Bent, straight, bent, straight. It's alternating between each of those. It's also very useful in that it shows these lines across specifically for the head. Notice at the highest point is where I had my foot straight, left or my right foot straight, and my left leg bent. That's the highest point that I'm at, and it shows it here. The lowest point uh, is when I've got it uh, spread and they're gonna start to bend. What I like about this handout is it gives you so many different uh, styles of walking, so here's a strut. Now we're starting to get into other parts of the character. The legs are still very similar, but now look at the hands. Our hands, we haven't even dealt with hands yet because that is even more to add. Jumping, running fast, tiptoes, skipping. Let's say we wanted to use this as a starting point to, draw, to try this again. I want to get this file into Animate so I can trace it. I've been giving you files that are already prepared. Here's, what, here's how you can do this if you want to bring in your own file into Animate. I've, uh, save, uh, I'm going to go back to Animate and I'm going to save it. We will, uh, we will make a new layer. We'll call it Walk4. I think maybe Animate is smart enough nowadays to be able to drag and drop, but we'll do it the, the old way. Go back to frame one on a brand new Walk 4 layer. And then we'll go up to the File menu, Import, Import to Stage. We're going to take the graphic example that I gave you, and we're going to put it into Animate as a, as a tracing. So import, import to stage, which is also control R. From 
from uh, your desktop, you want that walk to GIF. It's really small, so we can use the um, quick transform. So after you bring it in, it might be small, and you want to switch over to the free transform tool, quick, the Q, quick transform. And I'm going to stretch it out so that it's the paper is as big as my stage that was brought into Walk 4 layer. Uh, actually, let's call let's call Walk 4 layer uh, example, and then lock it and make a new layer called walk4. So we, we brought in the graphic, we put it into its own layer, we called it example. I locked the layer so that I don't accidentally, accidentally drop on top of it. Now I've made a new layer called walk4. I'm going to see a little bit about doing some tracing there. I'm going to start with the plain old walk. Now, because we're going to draw this in, uh, in Animate, they're going to be small when I draw them here, but I'll be able to stretch the sizes of these graphics. I'm going to get my brush tool. Uh, any color will be fine. I'm going to go with a red color. Maybe now it's a little easier to see it if it's a red color on top of the white. I'm still going to try it with the stick figures for a moment and then I'll draw it with a kind of a real figure. I'm just still getting the idea of the, of the figure. So in this case, notice also how they start off is that the body is, is already angled. Zoom in some more there. The body's already angled in this particular walk cycle. We started with a completely straight up body. That was one of the reasons why it wasn't so realistic. Body is here, straight leg, straight leg. So the heel of the right foot, now we can tell it's the right foot, but the real the heel of the right foot is hitting the ground. The left foot toe is there. Next is the body again, legs starting to bend, other legs starting to come up. little we're putting that together so let's see here again starting with the starting with the back bend I'm going to take that back so the leg where his weight is on the right leg because he's got the the left leg the right leg the left leg is the black leg the right leg is the is the white leg so those are bending different because he's going to start to put his weight on one leg again depending how much Uh, or how, how cartoony or how much you want it to change. Um, in this example, this one has been always at, um, at, at an angle. The, the back has not been completely straight. It was part of it as well. 
Where we stopped previously is, um, is over here. Now at the moment, I'm drawing, or we're drawing, all of these on one frame. They're not being drawn on separate frames. That's OK. We can move them to separate frames in just a moment. But these are all being drawn <coughs> on one frame, most likely. I didn't say anything about insert blank keyframe. You may have been doing it great. But I was drawing each one just on one frame. And we'll see that we can move our drawings to separate frames in just a moment. But I'm going to draw the rest of these. So where this started to get different is that the right leg was pretty straight on that point. Then it started to move back to bend. The other leg starting to move forward and bent. And the head. <coughs> this is getting over to the point basically where the leg has gone to the opposite side. is starting to bend also. And it's eventually going to come back. And then this loops, if you see back to back to the um, first frame that's going to loop so here I'm going to draw each of those frames and I'll show you in a moment how to distribute them to their own frames do them all on one layer on one frame So hopefully you've got some of these, something like that. I'm still going with stick figures. I'm going to hide my example layer for a moment. It's looking like this. I still just focused on the legs for the moment. Arms, I'll get to that. But uh, notice again, this time it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That one I think I drew a little too high. It was like skipping. And I go back for that. But you've got all of these, <coughs> trying to keep the head consistent consistent. Again, the body is moving, is angled forward. That's a subconscious thing, and that's something for animation as well. That if I'm, if I'm simply walking like this, I'm probably walking pretty straight up. But if I was leaning forward a little bit more, that'd be more cartoony. That'd be more uh, realistic, quote unquote, in the cartoony sense. So I drew all of these on the same um, frame. If you did it like me, let me show you then how to spread them out to the different frames. If you get your, I'm going to hide the example layer so I can see what I drew. And then I'm going to get my select tool. I need to select all of these at once. One quick way to do it is control A on the keyboard. You can also click on the black dot. If you click on the black dot of the frame, it also selects everything in that in that uh, frame. And then we've got uh, where did they put it? It's uh, distribute to layers. 
Distribute to layers. Right click. Oh, here we go. If you, it's somewhere in the menus, I'm sure. But once you've selected everything, click on dot. You right click one of the drawings. Um, oh, that distributes to keyframes. Depending how you drew it. Some of mine don't touch. That's why mine got a little weird. I'm going to undo that. Control Z. I need to make sure that all of these actually touch. It might, uh, if they were separate like this, it's going to think that each one of those things is a separate thing. Here's a quick way to do it, actually. Don't worry about letting them all touch. Uh, we need to group these things. If you, if like me, uh, they're, they're not touching, it's going to think each of these things is a separate thing to move to a layer. Here's what I'm going to do. With the lasso tool, I'm going to make a selection around the first one, and then Control G to group. And I'm going to select that. Control G. That becomes one element now. In my case, a moment ago, it was one, two, three, four. I'm going to select the whole one of the guys. Control G. Control G to group. For each one, yes. So select each one of those and group each one first. Then we'll do the distribute because then they'll be individual. Then they'll be units instead of individual limbs. So I am selecting each one. Control G. Okay, so you want to make sure each one is has been grouped. You can tell that if that by clicking one one of them, and there should be a box all around them, and your properties also tell you you've got a group. Okay, so now that each of them is grouped, if I if I click the layer, everything selects. Now, if I right click one of them, distribute to keyframes. So, what happens when you do the distribute to keyframes is notice my, my timeline here. Uh, I have frame one is empty. And then in, in my case, it starts with frame 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and all of that. That frame 1 that is completely empty, I don't need it. I want to delete it, so right-click that blank frame 1. If you've got a blank frame 1 like me, right-click it, and then we've got remove frame. So now we've got each individual frame that I drew. And because I drew it in the actual spot in the model sheet, it, it actually looks like it moves, but we'll fix that in a moment. And notice you can go back and forth on your animation here on the keyboard if you click the plus, uh, I'm sorry, if you click the comma or period on the keyboard, the, the period goes forward, the comma goes back. spot drew each step. When I traced the model sheet, the walk cycle model sheet, it got moved to each next spot. I want to bring them all together to the same location, um, but they're on separate frames. So we have the ability to edit multiple frames.
I want to put all of those walking steps on one in, in one spot. So I'll go back to frame one. There's a button, edit multiple frames. It's near onion skin. It's that one right there. Edit multiple frames. You have two frames for that one. And then I want to stretch out the selection. We saw that if we clicked one frame, it selects everything in that one frame. I want to select all of them. They've been put into separate frames, but I've activated edit multiple. Make sure you stretch that out so that you can encompass them all. I want to select all of those frames to edit them at once. If you click on the name of your layer, or actually the icon, next to the name of your layer, you will select all of the frames right there. So now all of my frames are selected. You can see them all at once. They're all selected. And click on the icon. Make sure edit multiple frames is on. You should have an icon it kind of looks like a bar graph, but that's a line. I want to align all of these on one spot. So if you act, if you uh, show a line, we have all of these ways to align your items. We want a line horizontal center right there. So what that does is they're all spread out. I want them aligned same spot. All of those that are selected, align them all to the center. Like also, while I'm here, while they're all selected like this, I can use my uh, free transform and all of them at once make them as big as the document. size. Now if I press escape or click anywhere else that deselects and I want to turn off the edit multiple. If I test it I need to turn my example into a guide so that I don't see it. frames, it goes blank. So a couple of things are happening. It's going blank. It's moving too fast. Why is it going blank? Because there's nothing else. There's nothing else. There's a couple of frames where there's nothing else. Notice our animation only went up at this point until, lo until frame 8. But then the animation it still <laughs> itself still goes on to 11. So there's a few frames where there's nothing else. And therefore it gets blank. Now why is it too fast? No, it is. We never change our frame rate. There's no um, blank keyframes. There's no keyframes. Uh, blank keyframes would be the white dots, but there's no frames. There's no extra frames. Good. So it's not padded out like this. So we'll need to do that for each of those. We need to add a, a, f a frame for each of those. And the way we do that now, we go back to frame one of our walk four. This time, the fastest way on the keyboard is just press F5. That adds the blank not the blank, but that adds the frame. And then the next one, F5, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So on each of those frames, click them and press F5 so that 
each frame is visible for two frames. So now that solves the problem that it was moving too fast. We've slowed it down by not changing the <coughs> FPS. We've doubled each frame so it's visible two twenty-fourths of a second. A moment ago, they were one twenty-fourth of a second. Now when they're double like this, they're two twenty-fourths of a second. And now they're not going to blank out anymore because it extends further here and it's not empty. Now if I save it and, and, and test it, yeah, it's way smoother. way smoother. It's smoother because we have more frames in between each step. And having those guides, I think now, after we've tried it ourselves blindly, now with guides, hopefully it makes a little more sense. of it is smoother, the legs work a little better if I had drawn in the hands as well <coughs> to further uh, do the exaggeration of the hands moving like this. I think that would also make it even more realistic. So if I'm at this point, I think it's looking okay, but I kind of see like a little bit of a, a weird twitch, maybe at one of the last steps. I think the movement of the legs is pretty good, but then I kind of feel like maybe at the very end there's there's a, like a like a weird little pause, and that could be that because as I you know as I scrub this around, the very last frame. Uh, eventually the last frame goes into the first frame so when we have this bent leg it goes out straight so I'm gonna try this 
uh, I might not need a, another frame at the end. It still seems to do it. When I drew this one, I think I drew the, the leg too too far, too big, out of the foot, that is. I think that foot might be a little too big and looks odd. It's going too far. So um, I'm just kind of looking at my animation there on the multiple on the multiple uh, frames here. Just this is another way to look at it, onion skin. So I did that. I turned on onion skin, and then you can uh, push or pull out that. It looks way too jumbled when it's too many frames but uh, if you pull it out to a certain point. And I just kind of scrub the playhead. I, uh, using the, the period or the comma, I kind of like stepped through the animation a little bit. And I think I drew that leg, that foot there a little too, too far, too, too long compared to the other one. See, at that point, in my case, at this point, the foot looks good here, but then it was way too big over here. So it's not on model. Again, that's the point of the model sheet. Um, so for me to fix that, in my case, if I need to fix what I've already drawn, um, what, what I would do is uh, this is a group. If I go back to frame one and I try to edit this, this is a, this is a group. It, I could ungroup it, or um, I have various things that I can do. but. One quick way is to ungroup it. Um, that is under. Oh, yeah, ungroup right there. So, grouping it would be sort of like to lock it together. And then I need to ungroup it. So, I have it selected, ungroup, which is Control Shift G. I never remember that one, but Control G is to group. And then if I ungroup it, that now is back down to basic shapes. So, I can go in and Maybe get my eraser and erase. I think the f my, my some of those feet were a little too long in my case. So if I want to continue to edit a grouped item, I should ungroup it. You see why this is this is why we went with a very simple stick figure with no hands because this is pretty complex. If you were to look at animating your character that you turned in, some of the very complex, interesting characters that you did would be very difficult to animate. Like this is the one that I just for practice I was doing this character. So this character here, I don't know, she's a space pirate or something. Uh, she has arms and legs, of course, which I have to animate, and then the hair. You know, if I'm really doing it really well, I would want the hair to be bouncing a little bit as a walk. There's this, like, uh, I don't know what this kind of shirt is called. A, what is it called? A belly shirt? You know, when it shows off the navel, I guess? If, if you were walking, it would maybe be blowing in the wind a little bit, too. So, to animate this kind of walking, 
this character walking, this would be even more difficult. Some of you drew characters with a tail. That's cool, and when we get to the animation part, the tail's gonna need to animate a little bit too. Is it gonna sway a little bit? Is it gonna be stiff and only the tip moves? So things to think about. Characters with big ears and such, that'll be cool too. We need to think about the, the ears moving. Obviously for myself, for this kind of humanoid character, the ear's not really gonna move. But if I've got big floppy bunny ears, they're probably gonna sway a little bit in the, as, as I walk. <laughs> So that's why the animation of the walk cycle is one of the most difficult things. Um, I'll show you one more thing, then we'll, then we'll wrap it up for the moment. Uh, we're not going to have anything to turn in or anything just yet. We're building up these concepts for an animation eventually. But the other handout that I have for you in the, in the folder, if you haven't seen it yet, back in the 126 folder, if you copy to your desktop, CIS-126 Twinkle, 12 Techniques. This is uh, from a book uh, about animation. Uh, if you open that up. This is a, a distillation of the 12 principles of animation. There's a little introduction about uh, animation in general. Uh, moving stuff around is not animation, and it just goes on fundamentals. And then uh, for the next few pages, let's see here. So in general, these, these 12 principles are principles that were developed over decades of animation. Um, and they're explained here in various ways. That one optional book that I recommended in the syllabus, the tradition, the Tradigital Guide to Animation in Animate, has a complete chapter on each of these concepts. This is a very quick introduction to that. But all of these are things to take, take into account when you animate, squash and stretch, etc. Timing, exaggeration, appeal. So for example, squash and stretch, depending on your kind of animation. This, for example, is a head bouncing. Uh, it's going down, it hits the floor, it squashes a little bit, it deforms a little bit. Uh, if this is a, a rubber ball hitting the ground in animation, we would want to distort it as it hits a solid surface while it goes on to its way top of the, of the drop, it's a normal circle. At the bottom where it hits something solid, it squashes a little bit. Depending how much it exaggerates, that's how much, how cartoony your drawing is. It mentions here, I think, if you drop like a bowling ball, that should not distort, because it's a solid, strong shape. Then, as it as gravity pulls it down, this is distorted a little bit too. Gravity's pulling it down. It has a bunch of energy when it hits the floor, all the energy is being released, another stretch, and then back to normal. But if you try to practice with this, you make a ball that hits the floor and bounces up, and in between you exaggerate a little bit, that actually gives you more realism. The thing with cartoons is, to some degree, as you exaggerate, it actually gets more quote unquote realistic. At a certain point, if you exaggerate too much, it is obviously very cartoony, not realistic. This goes on here to talk about the concept of anticipation, um, in that this character is about to catch a chicken, but there's a spot of animation where you know he could just try to go from here to here, try to grab the chicken. But there's a spot here, animated, where he's preparing to catch the chicken. And then he fails. And then there's a part after that where it's the result of not catching the chicken. Anticipation. Waiting for something to happen, or waiting after something happened. Again, we'll talk about these concepts in more detail. Uh, staging. This will be more complex to talk about at the moment. We're, we're not there yet, but it's about setting up a scene. Something's happening here. There's this shot of the uh, auto shop. The car pulls up, and then the character walks in. Going from here to here, it's a big jump, conceptually. There's this car still in the background to show you. He came from that car. He's 
staging. It's the part of movie making to set up a scene. Let's see. Straight ahead versus post to pose. That depends on how you are going to anime. We'll see that later. Follow through and overlapping action. So these are extra actions that happen in addition to the main the main action. This is a rock being thrown at the character's head. Well, not only is the head reacting, but the hat is going to react in a different kind of way. The head goes forward and it comes back, but the hat is working at a different time. Also, the ears. Here comes the, the rock it hits him. The ear starts to swing like a pendulum. It goes all the way over there. And the ear starts to swing back at a different speed and pace than the head, as well as the hat. So all of these details of these complex characters that we drew, if we want to make that a very realistic animation, those are the things we need to think about too. Let's see, slow in, slow out. Uh, if I'm moving my hand mechanically simply like this, it has a certain kind of style to it. But if I move my hand a little bit more like uh, flowy and such, we can animate that as well. This is... is this ball is falling. Less drawings right here. We saw less drawings means it goes faster. More drawings means it goes slower. So here, with less drawings, this ball moved really fast to hit the ground. It's squashed. It's coming back up on the arc. And at a certain point, there's lots of drawings to show each part of the arc. Slow, and then fast, and then slow. So varying the amount. We simply had two frames per keyframe. We might want to have three frames uh, for a slower action or less keyframes for a faster action. Arcs is a little complex to talk about. It just depends on the movement of things. Secondary action that relates to the extra pieces of your drawing and timing. A lot of these will make more sense as we start to do it, but those are those frames that we add. Exaggeration. How much do we distort things? Here's the rock falling on the character. The character gets squashed, bounces back up. Notice that exaggeration right there. That character is obviously a lot larger than normal size. Exaggeration. And then your style of drawing with um, solid drawing and appeal. Uh, solid drawing relates to how realistic is the character. You may be going for a character that's not realistic, but from what everyone turned in, most people are going for kind of realistic characters, even if they're fantastical. Well, we want to make those characters appear like they exist. <coughs> there are some cool like monster kind of characters and such, and I get a sense of them overall that they kind of exist. That's solid drawing, that they can exist and then appeal. Um, you can go th to the school of animation of a, like, you know, weird, simple, ugly drawing, and that's a style. Great. You could also go to the opposite, which is a more realistic style. That's great. It's all valid. Here what it's saying is comparing these two characters. In this case, this one has more appeal, simply because look at the variation in these lines. These are all perfect, the same line all across, same color, same pose, same character, everything's the same. Both of them are the same. The line quality is different. Look at this thicker line here, thinner line here. This has more appeal than this one. Look at that nose compared to that one. So even with the pizza box, straight lines compared to thicker and thinner. And that's because of our pen tablets being able to um, do the pressure sensitivity. You may do this style and it's perfectly fine. It's just saying here that style that you give your characters, that's something to think about. Um, you know, completely consistent lines, and you see that on a lot of animation, or lines that, that change and alter to give a different style. Um, and then just goes on here. So this is a, a quick 12 pages on the 12 principles of animation. 
you should check those out. We'll be applying these in more detail next time. These uh, walk cycles that we did here, I, I do want you to have one pretty good walk cycle. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna go with this one. We're gonna use it next time to start to talk about um, backgrounds. I want the character to walk on a background, and I want to have a sort of two, they call it two and a half D style of animation, parallax scrolling. I want the background to scroll. I want different backgrounds to scroll at different speeds. So this that we drew, keep it for next time, or I guess I can give you a copy of mine next time. We're going to then uh, animate the character walking somewhere next time.